Helldivers 2 has a clear emphasis on playing the game at the higher difficulties by keeping the rare samples as well as the best rewards the higher the difficulty is. But sometimes, we don't have a group of friends to play with or just want to take the game on completely solo. But playing solo is quite a different beast. So in this video, I want to give the best 5 beginner tips I learned the hard way as I made my way through the game all the way to the suicide difficulty completely solo. I'll be making my way all the way onto the hell Diver difficulty completely solo and I'll make sure to keep you guys updated with the best tips to handle the game at this level, so stay tuned for that. Currently, I'm only on level 10 with only one module upgraded, so there is quite a long way to go, which is why this video is a beginner guide. Over time, I will be releasing more advanced guides as I make my way to Helldiver difficulty completely solo alongside you guys. But without any further ado, let's get to these 5 tips. First off, you want to be a jack of all trades. You do not want to specialize solely on one thing such as dealing with swarms, but forgetting to put in your loadout, something that will enable you to deal with armored enemies such as the charger as well as the bio titan. So in other words, find a loadout that covers all bases, that can deal with swarms as well as armored enemies. Personally, the way I see it is, you should have one weapon to deal with armored enemies and one weapon that can deal with swarms quite efficiently. For stratagems, I recommend one backpack stratagem, which we'll get into later, one stratagem that will help you deal with swarms such as turrets, one stratagem that specializes on dealing with armored enemies such as the precision orbital strike, and a hybrid stratagem that will help you deal with both swarms and armored enemies such as the eagle airstrike. By using this tip, you will be able to cover all bases and find yourself feeling a lot more comfortable to deal with every single type of enemy in the game rather than just one specific type of enemy. Which brings me to my second tip get familiar with your enemies. What I mean by that is, learn how each enemy type works and how to counter them. One great example of this is the charger. The first few times I fought a charger, it felt like an extremely difficult enemy to deal with, and as I went on playing over and over again and encountering many many chargers, I now find myself dealing with chargers to be extremely easy. Even dealing with multiple chargers isn't a problem. I mean, they are quite a tanky unit, but I don't really take any damage from chargers unless I mess up pretty badly. And this is something that is great about playing solo, by the way, is that you're dealing with these units hand on. So you find yourself learning their attacks, their patterns, and even animations, which end up making you quite a proficient Helldiver when dealing with them. As you continue to play solo and pay attention to their movements, you start to understand how each enemy works and what their weaknesses are. If you would like to see a guide on how to deal with each type of enemy, then let me know in the comments section below. But for now, let's go on to the third tip. For the third tip, I must recommend to bring a backpack stratagem. I'm not going to say exactly which stratagem to bring as I haven't tried all of them. If you asked me a few days ago which backpack stratagem is the best, I would have said the jump pack one is by far the best. But since then, I've tried the guard dog and this little sucker is actually pretty good. Is it better than the jet pack? I'm not sure and that'll depend on the situation. But one thing remains true, make sure you bring at least one backpack stratagem. Now these little stratagems, they will remain with you pretty much for the entirety of your run and aren't necessarily bound to cooldowns, which overall just makes your character a lot stronger. The guard dog is a great support for dealing with swarms, but I also found the jump pack to be amazing when dealing with bio titans as you're very easily able to kite them. So this will depend really on the situation you're going up against. I'll keep you guys informed on stratagems in the future as to which stratagem to pick, but right now I cannot confidently give you an answer to that as there is a wide variety of different stratagems for me to try before I can confidently give you an answer, but stay tuned for that. Now tip number 4, you come to learn the hard way as you're going up into the higher difficulties. Don't take every fight and every patrol. In the lower difficulties, you can pretty confidently take on every fight and every patrol and they aren't much of an issue. But as the difficulty ramps up, patrols aren't just little weaklings that call other weaklings as reinforcements. Instead, they start becoming some mid-sized to large-sized enemies that can call some pretty big enemies as reinforcements. On the extreme difficulty, for example, I've come across several charger patrols that really just aren't worth the effort. Because even if you can pretty confidently take on these patrols, these aren't really giving you anything. You're not getting extra XP, 
you're not getting extra requisition or samples for dealing with these. So your best bet is to try to avoid patrols at all costs as these will only waste your precious times as well as your stratagem uses and possibly even your life, which will dwindle down your reinforcements. Now for the fifth and last tip, focus on your main mission. Personally, I'm very guilty of wanting to do side objectives and points of interest before I start taking on the main objectives, because as we all know, when we play RPG games, we don't want to just bum rush the main objectives. Instead, we want to experience the whole game as a whole, so we go around doing side objectives and points of interest before we even get down to the main objectives. However, I did not recommend keeping that mindset in Helldivers 2. You have a limited amount of time, which oftentimes looks like a lot of time, but as you get caught in situations such as dealing with patrols, nests, or even big enemies such as the Bio Titan, you will oftentimes spend several minutes dealing with these and by the time you realize it, you have to bum rush the main objective, forcing you to play very aggressively to try to complete everything as fast as you can, which will lead you to make a lot of mistakes. Instead, what I recommend is prioritize the main objectives first. And after you complete the main objectives, you don't even need to extract for the mission to be a success. You can literally die and lose all of your lives, but you still have won this mission and will be able to progress further. But of course, we want to be able to extract as many samples as we can, so we want to stay alive. What I recommend is beat the main objectives first, secure that win, and then start going for the nests and samples inside objectives. Now side objectives, if you come across them as you're making your way through your main objectives, then I'll say, okay, go ahead and do it. But I have recently found that doing your main objectives first will leave you with a lot of time left over, which will grant you a lot of time to work on your other priorities. But take this with a grain of salt, because sometimes side objectives are right next to main objectives, so there's no reason not to do them and sometimes they might be side objectives that is very worthwhile doing such as the satellite if it's right next to you or most importantly the stalker's nest if you go into a map that has the stalker's nest then i recommend you do that even before your main objectives as these will spawn stalkers that will literally cross the entire map to come and kill you so you best get rid of that also a little small quick tip for you to find these stalkers nest with ease, just pay attention to where they're coming from. If they're coming, let's say from the east side of the map, just open your mini map and look for the red circles on the east side of the map and then just go to it and most likely the stalker's nest will be just there so just go ahead and destroy it and a quick bonus tip before this video ends take this with a grain of salt as this is a very opinion based tip the tip is i personally believe light armor is king for solo play movement is going to be your best friend when dealing with enemies such as outplaying the charger to being able to kite the bio titan and I find the light armor to protect you enough. So that's it for the solo beginner guide. I will be making more advanced guides as I progress through the game and I find myself in the Helldiver difficulty. Also, I'll be posting videos on farming samples, on the best weapons, best armors, and things like that. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.